Thanks for starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Ijeon in Seoul. We have a lot on our plate today, so let's get started with a look at the day's highlights. Exports of high-value added products have gone up for Korea since 2005, but it still lags far behind other advanced economies. Korea launches its first online-only bank today, allowing customers to do much of their banking with just a few taps on their smartphones. These stories are more coming right up. Korean conglomerate share of the country's exports has been on the decline, dropping to an eight-year low last year. Korea Trade Statistics Promotion Institute says the combined exports by conglomerates fell to some 308 billion U.S. dollars in 2016, accounting for 62 percent of total exports. That's the lowest since 2008, after being on a four-year decline. Industry experts say it's mostly due to the decline in exports overall, spurred on by falling oil prices. Korea's main exports, semiconductors, cars and ships, fell almost 8 percent last year from 2015. A recent report shows where Korea stands when it comes to exports of high-value added products in comparison to other countries. Now, while the country has seen some progress, there are growing calls for greater balance across different fields. Our Lee Ju Young has the story. Korea's exports of high-value added products have increased considerably over the past decade, but not enough to reach levels similar to that of other developed countries. According to a report by Korea International Trade Association, Korea's export index of high-value added products rose moderately from about 218 in 2005 to 231.7 in 2015. But figures show levels are significantly lower than countries like Germany, Japan and the U.S., with China quickly closing in. Compared to other countries, though, Korea had a comparative advantage when it came to semiconductors, precision instruments and video and audio communication equipment. When it comes to the field of information technology, the country has a heavy focus on high-value-added goods like semiconductors and electronic parts. But the association says the government needs to help fund research and development in other fields as well. Korea Institute for Industrial Economics and Trade also backs this argument, saying it's important to produce a synergy effect by striking a balance within industries in order to boost Korea's growth potential as a whole. Lee ju Business Daily. The first Internet-only bank here in Korea has kicked off today, expanding options for online banking users and taking the next step forward in promoting innovation in the country's financial sector. Our Shin Se-min reports. No more waiting in line at the bank counter. This is an online-only bank, the first of its kind in Korea, aiming to win big from its digital-friendly customers. It's also the first bank to secure regulatory approval from the country's financial authorities in the past 25 years. Spearheaded by one of the country's leading telecom companies, KT, and 20 other companies, including Udi Bank, customers can open up a bank account or even apply for loans 24-7, 365 days a year. With no brick-and-mortar presence, the bank gives better offers to its customers. The interest on time deposits can reach up to 2 percent a year, outstripping average commercial bank offers sitting at 1.44. The interest on credit loans only at 2.73 percent are significantly lower than the commercial bank average of 4.46. It even allows more affordable loans to borrowers regarded as having low credit scores by other lenders as it uses KT Corp's big data system to thoroughly analyze customers' credit history. By lowering the bar, the new bank plans to provide 120,000 marginalized borrowers like small business owners and young workers with nearly 450 million U.S. dollars in loans in the coming three years. On top of such attractive deals, the bank also provides dual accounts that integrate checking and savings accounts into one. Wire transfers can be done with fewer digits via text message to the phone number of the other party. 
It's a very different makeup from internet banking services offered by conventional banks, but it also comes with some limitations. There are concerns that internet-only banks won't be able to expand their reach of customers as the current banking law does not allow non-financial institutions to hold more than 10 percent in a bank. In other words, a shareholder like KT as of now will not be able to boost its position, limiting additional capital or applying extra IT-related know-hows that could benefit the bank's operational footing. Staying ahead in competition against major commercial banks will also be a major obstacle, while online-only banks look to establish strong foundations. Shin Zemin, Business Daily. The Korean equity market closed the first session of the week on a positive note. The cost that continued to perform relatively strongly. And we're now joined by our markets contributor Choi jin to talk about overall stock market performance and upcoming market events. Welcome, jin Suk. Great to be here. All right, so how did the Korean stock market close on the first day of the week? Both the Kospi and the Kosdaq rose slightly on the first session of the week. The Kospi closed with a slight uptick to close at 2167.51, while the Kosdaq surged by nearly 1.5% to close at 628. Since the uh, Kospi market has been, had been stuck in consolidation for the past few sessions, failing to climb higher, some experts even thought April will be a difficult month for domestic investors. However, such concerns were mitigated as the market rose slightly on the first session of the month. The Costa continued to outperform the uh, Kospi, rising for five consecutive sessions. Both foreigners and institutions bought shares on the market to lift the entire index. Now, what are some of the market events lined up for this week? First of all, investors might want to keep a close eye on the meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping. President Trump will host President Xi in Florida from April 6 to 7. Trump and Xi will discuss global, regional and bilateral issues of mutual concern, the White House said in a statement last week. Since Trump took a hard line on China's trade and currency practices during the presidential campaign, this week's summit is drawing a lot of attention from global investors. Expectations are not that positive, though. Beijing sig signaled little inclination to make concessions on trade with the U.S. after Trump warned of a difficult meeting through his Twitter account. After the announcement from China, Trump suggested that he would press Xi hard on trade. Therefore, investors need to be aware that tensions between two countries could rise in the near term. Now, the U.S. Fed Reserve's monetary policy is another important factor that global investors will be keeping their close eye on. So what are some of the related events will we see this week? That's right. Along with a number of Fed officials delivering speeches, the Fed will release the minutes from its March FOMC meeting on Wednesday local time. The minutes will give hints on what conversations were exchanged during the meeting. Fed officials have signaled there will be three interest rate hikes in 2017. However, some officials say the central bank needs to raise interest rates faster, insisting on four hikes instead. Therefore, the minutes will be helpful for investors to see what Fed officials really have in mind. Investors are also curious whether Fed officials discussed potential tightening of assets the Fed has right now. It means the Fed might actually reduce their assets other than raising interest rates. And there are also a number of important economic indicators reported this week, too. Exactly. March, U.S. auto sales reported on Monday, and the Labor Department employment report on Friday are expected to draw a lot of attention from investors. In particular, investors will closely watch labor market conditions in the U.S. because the Fed is uh, closely monitoring the jobs market, too. Experts expect around 180,000 jobs were created last month. Another robust job gains might fuel pressure on the Fed to speed up its tightening process. As always, investors will be able to get an idea of labor market conditions on Wednesday through the ADP jobs report ahead of Friday. 
Now back here in Korea, the mm -hmm. first quarter earnings season is expected to be in full swing this week. That's right. Domestic investors were in the so-called wait and see mode last week, just ahead of the Q1 earnings season. Samsung Electronics will officially uh, kick off the earnings season with its earnings guidance this Friday. Therefore, investors are expected to be rather prudent until the largest company by market cap unveils its quarterly results. Expectations for the earnings season have been surging. Experts expect companies listed on the Kospi market will record more than 42 trillion Korean won in operating income, and the figure is expected to surpass 43 trillion Korean won in Q2. Since we had a robust earnings report from POSCO, investors hope other companies will follow this positive trend this week. All right, a lot to look forward to this week. Thank you so much for coming in today. My pleasure. SK Hynex has jumped up two notches to reclaim the title as the world's third largest ship chip maker. Data from IHS showed a fourth quarter of robust memory chip sales for the Korean firm. SK Hynex logged $4.5 billion in sales in the October through December period. It accounted for 4.7% of global market share. Meanwhile, Intel Corporation and Samsung Electronics kept their posts as the top and number two players, respectively. Logging more than $15.5 billion in sales, Intel claimed a 16% market share, while Samsung Electronics had 12% with $11.7 billion. Toshiba's sale of its prized chip unit is reported to have attracted interest from some of the world's largest tech firms, including Google, Amazon, and Apple. But some are also saying that it may take longer for the spin-off to actually materialize. Amid reports, the Japanese tech giant had received bids of up to 2 trillion yen for its crown jewel. Toshiba Corporation stands to closely inspect the offers to ensure that they are not backed by Chinese money. Yenam News reports that strict requirements such as keeping factories in Japan emerge, Mitsubishi UFJ Morgan Stanley Securities has lowered its valuation of the semiconductor unit to 1.5 trillion yen. This says the struggling conglomerate could miss yet another deadline for its fourth quarter results scheduled for next Tuesday. A third delay could risk the company being delisted from the Tokyo Stock Exchange. China is continuing to lash out at Korea over the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system THAAD. And with Lotte having been one of the hardest hit by China's economic retaliation, our Oh Soo-young explains why things are not looking up for the Korean retail giant. Lotte supermarkets in China appear likely to stay closed for another month. According to the Korean retail giant, the Chinese authorities did not approve one Lotte store in China's southeastern Zhejiang province for reopening and ordered another store in the northeastern city of Tandong to stay shut for another month. These are just two of the more than 80 Lotte marts in China that have been forced to close since early March, after the local authorities cited them for supposed safety inspections and suspended their business. The store in Tandong says it made efforts to improve its safety and underwent another inspection by the authorities. But another problem was pointed out and it was told to stay closed for another month. Lotte officials in China say the inspection agencies are not cooperating with the stores to improve their safety. And even when they do communicate, they pick out another safety problem to justify another suspension. Lotte has become a key target of China's economic retaliation against Korea after it signed the deal with Korea's defense ministry to provide land for stationing the U.S. missile defense system THAAD. Almost 90 percent of Lotte supermarkets in China, 87 out of 99, have been closed for a month since safety inspections in late February or early March. 75 of them were hit with suspensions due to the alleged safety problems and 12 of them closed voluntarily because of severe protests. Lotte expects the two months out of business to cause a loss of almost 180 million US dollars. Meanwhile, the Korean government has raised formal objections to three cases of China's economic retaliation at last week's regular meeting of the WTO's Technical Barriers to Trade Committee. 
The cases include China limiting Korea's exports of powdered milk and applying complex standards for registering Korean-made medical devices in China. Korea will discuss these further at the next committee meeting in June, as well as with China's Commerce Ministry. Oh Soo-young, Business Daily. And staying with the that issue, experts are warning that Beijing's apparent economic retaliation is a self-defeating measure. In an editorial released on Sunday by the South China Morning Post, columnist Kerry Huang said that if Beijing keeps breaking free trade rules to make its foreign policy points against rival nations, it will hurt domestic markets and lose international stature. She pointed out that economic retaliations violate the World Trade Organization Treaty, and so China has launched what she called a shadow boycott of almost all things Korean. These include raising trade barriers through tightened regulations, setting up custom procedural obstacles, and influencing consumers through state media-led campaigns. Huang said such would end up being a double-edged sword for China, as domestic exporters would also be hurt. Another researcher from Oxford University's China Center said that Beijing's actions are running counter to President Xi Jinping's comments at a recent Davos Forum, in which he said he opposed a trade protectionism. The expert said boycotting products due to political reasons can't be seen as free trade. Tesla has marked a quarterly record in the number of deliveries it made in the first quarter of this year, rising about 69 percent from the same time last year. The American electric car maker says it made about 25,000 deliveries in the January to March period, beating market expectations. Model S vehicles accounted for about 13,450, while the rest were Model X cars. Tesla says its production in the first quarter also reached a quarterly high as well. The company says at this pace, it's on track to make as many as 50,000 deliveries within the first half of the year. In the race to be ready for the so-called fourth industrial revolution, there are new technologies that are popping up in the greater Asia region. And our Uniskim shows us a couple that could come up to a space near you. Welcome to Henna Hotel in Urayasu, Japan, near Tokyo Disney Resort. When you walk in, you'll notice the less traditional receptionists greeting you in several languages. Welcome to Henna Hotel. Please use the touch panel to select your language. Run by low-cost travel agent HIS, it's the brand's second hotel after it was recognized in 2015 for creating the first robot-staffed hotel by the Guinness World Records. The hen in our henna hotel can be translated as strange in English, but that's not what it means. It means change. As with our hotel, we are developing and evolving. The hotel is mostly staffed by robots, nine different types in fact, that help guests check in, clean the lobby, and even entertain their human counterparts. But the biggest attraction, manager Yukio Nagai says, is Tapia, the AI robots in every room. With its camera eyes, it recognizes people's movements and can think to suggest ideas for its guests. Tapia becomes more effective with frequent usage, and the operator has its eyes on taking its business model overseas. We are experiencing a lack of workers and fewer young people, and think we can expand this new business model of hotels, this henna hotel with robots, around the world. Meanwhile, over in Singapore, an Internet of Things firm that's working to bring texting to your household appliances. Unified Inbox is working with global firms like Bosch and IBM to enable users to text instructions to their vacuum cleaner or coffee machine without the error of being misunderstood. And to see, okay, I was texting here, I was texting with my wife, with my family, and this is my vacuum cleaner. I mean, it becomes quite personable, likable, so the device becomes an avatar of the brand. By the way, this is something manufacturers love. They have distributors, but they never have the contact to the end consumer. In this case, they can finally talk to the end consumer directly. Unified Inbox says for the user, there are no new interfaces to be learned or even apps to be downloaded. They can text right from their smartphones or via apps like KakaoTalk and WhatsApp. 
So far, the company supports more than 20 messaging apps, with the list of appliances being tested also growing. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. Personalization is catching on as the latest trend in e-commerce. Cutting-edge technologies, including big data and artificial intelligence, have enabled highly accurate, customized services online. So, how far has e-commerce come, and where is it headed? Let's take a look. Wu Youngho is waiting for someone at a cafe in Seoul. Soon, a man wearing a backpack arrives and starts taking measurements of Wu's foot. The man is from a handmade shoe company. I've been busy lately and haven't had the time to visit the store myself. The company sent someone to meet me at my convenience, which was really helpful. If a customer places an order online, a shoe's coordinator visits them in person, measures their foot, and delivers a pair of handmade shoes to them within two weeks. The company, which was spun off from a well-known Korean shoemaker, offers its custom shoe design service targeting busy office workers who cannot find the time to shop and men who want more than what ready-made shoes can offer. An average of 250 orders are placed every month. Now a year old, the company has received about 3,200 orders. Our shoes coordinators offer a clear explanation about leather or other details about the shoes and make a visit at the time and place of the customer's choosing so that he can try them on. Some of our customers return for their second or third pair by ordering online instead of using our visiting service. Just like the shoe company, online to offline or O2O services are increasingly tapping into new technologies to offer personalized solutions. But why? The global market for e-commerce is expected to reach 2.36 trillion U.S. dollars by 2018, backed by the rise of mobile shopping and fintech. Online retailers are integrating the concept of personalization into their service offerings to provide value that consumers want and gain an edge in the competitive market. Nowadays, we are seeing personalized e-commerce services where shoppers can simply set preferences to receive notifications on promotions and offers related to their favorite brands. In a competitive and ever-growing market for e-commerce, online retailers are offering new services that cater to the needs of consumers. Major online marketplaces are no exception to this trend. Common practices include a list of recommended products. Last December, 11th Street, an online marketplace run by SK Planet, launched an AI-based image search engine. When a shopper uploads an image of a product, the search engine returns a list of products that have similar material, colors, and patterns. The engine, which uses deep learning, a form of AI that involves training and inference, is said to have a 95 accuracy rate. There is another technology that is gaining ground in e-commerce. The core value of e-commerce is to quickly make personalized product suggestions to users to save them time and effort in shopping. Users can receive recommendations from the service providers even without using the keyword search. This user-friendly process is enabled by what is called a chatbot. A chatbot is an AI-powered service that can interact with shoppers via a chat interface. Chatbots are seen as the next step in web searching that can overcome the limitations of existing online or mobile interfaces, which often lack interactivity. In Korea, online market 11th Street has unveiled a digital concierge service. The feature allows users to look for and compare the prices of electronic appliances, like laptops, TVs, and refrigerators in a chat conversation but product recommendations are still being made by human operators. The retailer plans to introduce an advanced chatbot service that can process natural language within this year. Industry experts believe we will see more chatbots engaging with online shoppers. Chatbots can collect data from conversations with potential customers and use it to find out their preferences and offer personalized product recommendations in real time. This can increase user satisfaction, which is why virtually all e-commerce sites are interested in chatbots. Technological advances are bringing rapid changes to the e-commerce market. Experts point out development and patenting of original services are crucial. 
Sustainable e-commerce models are about creating something from nothing. Many players are now competing with one another with new business models and services. They are creating new transaction models that require minimum effort on the consumer's part. But these models should be patented. Personalized service that caters to individual needs is the latest buzzword in the e-commerce market. As online retailers vie for consumers with advanced personalized features, intense competition is expected to continue. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.